But the US Open Series well underway and one of the biggest tournaments, Washington, just completing with some massive results there. We have some really interesting changes in the rankings and to the race of the finals because, of course, that's starting to get real serious now. Let's go have a look at what happened last week. So we had five tournaments and we actually still have one result yet to be determined. The Prague Open, we're still waiting to see who would actually play in the final there. So we're going to have to talk about that maybe next week. We're starting on the ATP, Kitzbühel. We had Baez taking out Dominic Team. Baez wins 6-3, 6-1. But even though it wasn't a great final for Team, he did make a final, which is great to see again. For the first time in a long time, he's made that final. At the Los Cabos Open, we had Stefano Sidipas winning his 10th title, beating Alex Diminor 6-3, 6-4. Over in Washington, we had an ATP 500 with Dan Evans taking out Grigsball, winning the biggest trophy of his life, 7-5, 6-3. Very random tournament, that one. And the Washington Open for the ladies, also a 500 event, but a WTA 500 with Goff taking out Zachary, 6-2, 6-3 to lift the biggest trophy of her career. So some big results there, and they resulted in some massive change to the rankings. Having a look at the players outside the top 10 that have gone up in the rankings, Nuskova at the moment is number 52 in the world, 19 spots higher than last week. If she wins in Prague, she will go higher, but at this stage, she's going to be at least 52 in the world. Dan Evans, he's gone up nine spots to number 21, a career high for him after winning the biggest trophy of his career. And Baez, he's gone up 30 spots after winning that one ATP 250 event to number 42 in the world. So he's trying to play for a seed at the US Open over the next few weeks. So some big results there and some big changes to the rankings for those players outside. Players that have dropped down the rankings, Paola Bedosa, she's gone down 12 spots to number 45 in the world after dropping points from this time last year. Michael Ema, he's gone down 26 spots to 82 in the world. And of course, he's on suspension. So we don't know when he's coming back. And his ranking is really, really suffering with not being able to play tennis. And Nick Kyrgios, he's gone down 57 spots to 92 in the world. And hopefully he can use a protected ranking or maybe a wild card to play the US Open because he didn't defend Washington where he won last year. And it really showed in the rankings. So some massive changes there for some players that didn't defend points this week. All right, let's start on the WTA with the rankings. No change up the top, which Fiontech still at number one with Sabalenka not too far behind at number two. We did have a change at number three with Pagula going up to number three after making it to the semifinals of Washington, pushing Rabakina down to number four. So very close in the rankings, those two. Jabir stays at number five with Garcia at six. Goff stays at seven despite winning Washington, but adds a lot of points to her total. And Zachary, she overtakes Kvitova to go to number eight after making the final of Washington, pushing Kvitova down to nine and Von Drusova the Wimbledon champion still rounds out the top 10 but everybody in that list except for Ons Jabeur is playing this week in Canada so huge amount of points on the line in Montreal we could see some massive changes over the next couple of weeks and of course Cincy after this going to the race of the finals now for the WTA and still only the two players qualified with Sabalenka and Sviantec but Rebecca is not too far behind there at number 3 and with a couple of good results could qualify before the US Open Pagula helps her case by getting a bunch of points in Washington staying at number 4 though with Von Drusov at 5 and Jabeur at 6 but Goff she goes up to number seven after winning Washington, pushing down Kvitova and Mukova to number eight and nine. And Bencic adds 100 points to her total after making the quarterfinals of Washington and rounding out the top 10. But again, as I said, we've got a lot of points up for grabs in the next two weeks with two WTA 1000 events. And then of course the US Open. So start seeing a lot more players qualify for the end of year finals over the next month. Over on the men's side of things, no change at the top with Elkarez still at number one, Djokovic at number two, and of course Djokovic not playing this week. Elkarez is playing, so a big chance there for Elkarez to extend his lead at number one. Medvedev stays at number three with a change at the bottom of the top five. City pass with winning Los Cabos, he leapfrogs Rude into that number four spot, pushing Rude down to number five. And of course, Rude has points to defend from next week's Canada Open. So Tsitsipas trying to put himself in that top four position for the US Open. Runa comes in at six with Rublev at number seven. Sinner at eight. Fritz at nine. And Tiafo rounds out the top 10 for this week. And as I said, for the ladies, the same thing for the men. We've got 2,000 points up for grabs over the next two weeks. Expect some changes. Over to the race of the finals now. And still, only Alcaraz is qualified on points with Djokovic qualifying thanks to winning two Grand Slams. But on points, he's still not qualified. So we'll wait and see over the next couple of weeks whether or not Djokovic will qualify on his points alone. Maybe Medvedev stays at number three, but again, we have a change down the bottom of the top five with City Pass going up to number four, pushing Rublev this time down to number five after, of course, winning Los Cabos last week. Sinner comes in at number six with Runa at seven. Rude is at eight. Fritz at number nine, and Alexander Zverev rounds out the top ten. And again, with 2,000 points on the line over the next two weeks, and of course, the US Open being worth 2,000 points, expect some players to qualify and also some massive changes. Maybe some players outside of this top ten jumping into contention for the ATP Finals. So there it is, a massive week for Washington and, of course, some smaller tournaments with the 250 events as well. But over the next couple of weeks, it's going to be massive and expect some massive changes, especially before the US Open. Of course, everyone's playing for a top seed 
Uh, City Pass and Rude, they're battling for that number four seed, which allows them to avoid playing against Djokovic and Alcaraz until the semi final. So, a big thing, especially for City Pass, who has struggled against those two guys before. Let me know down in the comments below. What's the biggest shock for you? Are you shocked that Nick Kyrgios completely fell out of the rankings this week? I mean, uh, he lost so many points, and I mean, 500 points, technically, and dropped 50 spots. I mean, it's a real brutal game when you're not playing. And he's going to have to rely on protected rankings or wild cards. And of course, tournaments are going to give him wild cards. Why wouldn't they? He sells out stadiums even if he is 150 in the world. So let's see what happens with him. But let me know down in the comments below. What's been the craziest change for you this week in the rankings? With Canada and Cincinnati coming up over the next few weeks, some massive changes are going to come up in the next few weeks as well.